I say, cut that a bit fine, didn't I? You did. But sorry and all that. So you should be. The chances of getting killed are quite high enough without you fooling around. Close to the ground as well. I don't need to be such a bore about it, is there, old man? Oh, you're just... Well, as long as we're still friends. Well, I just hope Triggers didn't see you, that's all. Oh, Lord, perish the thought, eh? <laughs> yeah. Extraordinary breed, pilot. Yes. Very rum. I thought that Charles had really got up the blacksmith's nose this time. Yes, well... Breakfast? Yes, why not? I can think of one extraordinary good reason why. Young Kennard's got some Oxford marmalade in his latest hamper from Fortnum's. Well, what does the old man want to see us for? Do you know, Mills? I'm afraid I don't know, sir. Just send me Skylarking this morning, gentlemen. <clears throat> Skylarking? Pretty much, yes, sir. Neither sight nor sound of the hunt this morning, was there? Uh, no, sir. Weather's too good for him, I think, sir. He seems to like a bit of cloud to lurk in, sir. I wasn't referring to the hum. Oh? No, yes, sir? Don't come the innocent with me, gay lion. Morning. Morning, sir. Morning. See you in five minutes after breakfast. You two in. You bust an aeroplane with a damn silly stunt like that, and I'll see to it you never get another one. Never. Stunt, sir? You heard. But we were practicing tactical maneuvers under controlled conditions. Weren't we? Were you? Uh, more or less, sir. Get out of here, the pair of you, before I'm tempted to do the same. Sir? Yep. Oh, that's new, ain't it? Yeah. Wouldn't I like a roll with them? Oh, in this hot weather? Yeah, you could be right. I can still think about it, though, can't I? Funny. What? That's low. Make the most of it. Oh, yes. Just like that. As if there'd been a signal or something. It'll start again the same way soon enough. I suppose. Hot, though. Hot as hell, too. Swim. Racing. Hey. Dreaming about the girlfriend. Who was it who said war is hell? Whoever he was, he wasn't in the Royal Flying Corps. Not today, anyhow. See to it when we've had our cup of tea, right? Who's that? Mr. Rumpkin. It's Mr. Rumpkin. I was just passing. I thought I'd save you a journey of us to bring your regular order. Oh, that is kind. You'll have a cup of tea, will you? Yes, I will. Miss Lola. Thank you, Mrs. <clears throat> But that's yours. Well, I'll get another mug while I'm unloading your basket. Right. Thank you. The cup that cheers but never inebriates. Well, that was a very kind thought to bring down my order. Not at all. I've had a letter from Alan, by the way. Oh, that's good. Have they been ha having any of this lovely weather over there? Well, I put it over so as you can read it. All oh, but the first page, that is, and the last. Thank you.
How's trade? Ask the army purchasing officer. Buying up all the horses, not gainfully employed in farm work. <laughs> Things have gone up 20% in my line in the last year. Best wheat's gone up 24 shillings a quarter, and that's in six months. Well? Haircut? I'll give you a cut. Here I've got horses to shoe, turns to mend and tools to make, and the Lord knows what else to do. What am I going to give you an haircut? Even if I wanted to. Uh. Will you come back some afternoon and I'll see what I can do? But not if I find you under my feet meantime. Uh. Uh. Well, you've got to tell them what's what, haven't you? And you did, didn't you? Well. What, no fighting? And swimming and lazing about. And eating oysters in Amiens. Oh, he doesn't seem to be having too bad a time of it, what with one thing or another. <laughs> one wonders if we ain't worse off here. You speak for yourself. Well, I mean, oysters and Amiens. He doesn't sound to be having too bad a time, does he? And we have, I suppose. Oh, it, it, it's all comparative, of course. There's been a low. That, don't you read the casualty lists? There's still two or three hundred men a day getting killed. That's every day. It wasn't even a war on when one of those spit-and-string contraptions killed his father. And fight on not Alaris's life every time he... Well, I, uh... I'd better be going. My son before he was your intended. And you don't mind? It was well said and worth saying. Oh, I do wish he was here. How the hell's going on? Hunt arrived for breakfast or something? Have you pinched my talk? I'll oh, be quiet. Oh, Settle down, please. Settle down. Quiet. Oh, blast! <laughs> Sorry. Hey, you're in a fine picture of Elvin Abbott. Now, sorry to disturb your beauty sleep, gentlemen. There's a new push due. Oh, oh. about time, too. Once the yes. bombardment starts. This time, there isn't going to be any major bombardment. Well, that's a bit This time, silly. there's not going to be any warning, you see? That's silly, isn't it? Now, the idea is that the Hun thinks it's a day like any other. By the time he's woken up, we'll be through his lines. Hopefully. Sergeant, could you hand these maps out? Certainly, please? sir. Come in. Hand it round, please, sir. Oh, 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 Thanks so much. Now, listen. Quiet, please. Quiet. Look at those maps out. <laughs> Quiet! Now, Brigade has asked for three aeroplanes for ground support, which means that those crews are going to have about four hours to equip themselves for an entirely new role. Now, if the Huns are going to be fooled, our guns are going to have to provide the usual dawn chorus, so I want one pilot, one observer for spotting for the artillery as usual. Lieutenant's Galen and Favell. That's not I fair, don't mind sir. you frightening the Huns with those stunts of yours. I'm not having you put the wind up our fellow. I wasn't putting the wind up I don't up have time to sir. argue. Now, gentlemen, ground support for infantry. Devil are those? Malonite shells, sir. Malonite? Rings a bell. They're adapted to aerial bombardment, sir. By you? Well, yes, sir. What's the charge? 26 pounds, sir. Jeez, get them off. At any height that'll give you reasonable accuracy, those will blow you clean out of the sky. Well, I don't think so, sir. I'm telling you. We fitted them with parachutes, sir. That'll give them the directional stability, and with a bit of luck, let me get out of the way before they detonate. Oh, 
for shits. Well, that's ingenious, I will say. Might even work. You'll have to find out the hard way, won't you? Nothing like a bit of encouragement, is there? Get on with the milk run, yeah? Why not? Despite every casualties, our men showed magnificent dash and courage, and in some sectors, consolidated advances of as much as 100 yards. Yeah. I don't see much, does it? All those men and all those guns are weak to advance 100 yards. It's not bright in front out there. <laughs> well, I know that, and I know one of our lads is as good as two or three Germans. <laughs> So, if they were going to advance, I'd have thought there'd be no stopping them. Well, for a mile or two, anyway. Just think of a giant midden yard, all churned up by the hooves of cattle. Now drop two lines of toy soldiers into that, and you begin to get some idea. I mean, just to get out your own trench, you have to clamber up a sheer earth face that's higher than this place, and then queuing up for the way through the wire, mat by tape, so the Bosch can range and sight that tape, too your own guns blasting every inch of the way ahead. That's if you're lucky, if they remember to lift the barrage. Otherwise... Uh, you were in the cavalry, of course. Aye. We was always on the move in them early days. But I seen enough of them trenches to know what them poor devils is going through out there now. Over the top and advancing into that lot. Mini wafers, flaming wafers, mortars, grenades. Spandos pumping 600 rounds a minute. Down into craters that's as, as deep as, as a house is high. Blood, muck, booby traps. The smell of cordite. 
Bits of horses. Bits of men. And that's before you near the German wire. Hundred yards. Hundred lifetimes out there. Tommy Rampling's hoop. Oh, yeah, I said I'd mend that for him. Seems no time since Alan was playing with one of those. <laughs> Going like Billy O down Ledbury Street. Always out in front of the other lads he were, too. Well, his name's not down here in this list, missus, so that's something you'd be thankful for, isn't it? Hey? Chaps always spell trouble to the PBI. Had it to which you don't often get close enough for us to be able to discriminate. What happened? Archie took a great chunk out of my propeller. You observe it too by the looks of things. Stretch a bearer! Sorry, Charles. Yeah, that's all right. Cheer up, old son. I keep him in my dugout until we can move him down the line. At the double! Tim Carey. Shall I get him? Down! If I did, the machine will rattle to pieces in a few minutes. No, I only need a new propeller. Communications that are strong suit, I'm afraid. Yes. Well, label the affected part. Your chaps will twig that, will they? Yes, if they see it. If that aeroplane survives the night, it'll be a miracle. You don't think the Hans just going to let it sit there, do you, till we can get spares from part? No, sir, but what I thought, if I was to take the propeller off your B2 and lash it onto mine somehow... <laughs> no, you'd never get off with the extra weight. Oh, but I would be the Avro, sir. Yes, with that, under normal circumstances, you might. You mean I can try it, sir? No. But you said it was... I said under normal circumstances. Now, the, the, the plain fact of the matter is none of us is in any kind of a state to pull off a stunt like that. It's not a stunt, It sir. is. Furthermore, it's one slap on the front line. I can't risk two men and another machine on the off chance of salvaging a wreck. So if I was to go in on my own, sir, I mean, Mr. Galian could take the Avro back, I could fit a replacement propeller on the BE-2 and get that back myself. Are you sure he can take off from there? Yes, sir, if the ground isn't more cut up than when I last saw yes, it, Yes, we can't be sure of that. Are you sure you can strip a propeller, fit a replacement? Yes, sir. Under fire? Yes. Well, you'd better be right. I can go, sir. We'll have to work out how we can lash a spare propeller to the Avro. We, oui, sir. We, oui, sir. Come on, let's get on with it.
It's down to in a minute, old boy. Well, I just stood down. <laughs> That's life in the trenches for you. Mm. You uh, have any shaving water, I suppose, would you? Ah, that is shaving water. The tea comes later and is rather darker brown. Drinking water is marginally colder and not to be touched unless heavily disinfected with rum. I imagine you, you didn't bring a razor with you. No. Thanks. Oh, don't thank me. Thank Pemberton. Pemberton? Yes. Summoned by the barber in the sky. Lord. Pemberton, Cartwright, Tomlinson, Hammond, Anson, Stone. <laughs> it's a bit like Chronicles in reverse, isn't it? And Stone predeceased Anson, who predeceased Hammond, who predeceased Tomlinson, who predeceased. <laughs> Do you realize that the, uh, the Colonel, the Adjutant, the Quartermaster, and myself are the only officers to have survived from the 2nd Battalion? <laughs> <laughs> I'm sorry. Uh, it's always worse in the morning. <laughs> How do you go on? What's the alternative? You learn not to make friends. Still, count our blessings. The Hun decided not to counterattack. Provisions got through. Thank God for a quiet night, eh? Call that quiet. Elysian. Why, we even managed to get your chap down the line. Oh, good. Who was that moaning last night? Uh, one of the patrols caught on the wire. Did you get him in? No, he died while you were sleeping. Seems crazy to complain about the mice, doesn't it? Rats, old boy, rats. Well, at least I didn't know that at the time. Each to his own, really. What? The men hate being lousy, worst of all. Personally, I find nits particularly trying. Here, you better put this on. You know, the men rather look to us to put in an appearance at stand to and stand down. Besides, it's when they bring the tea round. Oh, uh, you'd better bring your revolver with you. Personally, I couldn't hit the side of a house with the damn thing, but you never know. The mere sight of it might deter someone. Sergeant Major. Three company all present and standing too, sir. Night reports. Rifleman Simmons was recovered but died from his wounds, sir. Another casualty from our reconnaissance, sir. A company got a visit from a fighting patrol at 0200. Gave as good as they got. One dead, two wounded, and they took him one of the prisoners, sir. What about C Company's night attack? Oh, they pressed on comfortably. Unfortunately, they couldn't hold the counter-attack. Oh, back where they started? Yeah, more or less. Ah, for the course. Uh, Mr. Vance copped a blighty one, sir. Some people have all the luck. Yeah. <laughs> now, what about tea? Tea orderly? Tea, sir. Ah, oh, thank you. Charles. No, thank you. Care to take a look? Used to be first class farmland, they tell me. Here we go.
That'll do, Wilkins. Thank you, sir. Well, that seems to be about it. Give or take the odd aftermath. <laughs> Sergeant Major, casualty to list to me as soon as possible. <laughs> do shake hands with the battalion jester, won't you? <laughs> <laughs> I'm sorry. One develops a sort of callousness that serves to pass as humor. That'll be one of your chaps it's from the West. You're coming back with me. What? Tom will be flying the B2. Get in, Jedi, and damn you, move! Yes, sir. Hold the fuse lights. Ready? Lift! really going to stay on? Well, if it doesn't, I'm going to make a big hole in the ground. Right, can you spin a propeller, sir? You hold it like this and pull down. Parking party! I thought you chaps had it easy. Priming, God willing, or something. Switch on. Contact.
Everybody accounted for? Yes, sir. Injuries? Two severe, oh, five minor, sir. Dead? One, sir. He was arming your aircraft. Oh, my God! You must blame yourself. Why not? If you'd been there, if you destroyed your aeroplane, if I hadn't been so carried away by this whole damn silly adventure! Malonite's an unstable substance. I had a minute about it last night. I was so carried away by our... Tom foolery that I omitted to put it in orders this morning. We are all to blame. Me more than anybody. But we are all to blame. Right for nails, but have some more casts. Cartwheels, hunter, and pony. Aye, all three. You better have a set of racing plates in case anyone gets fancy. Right. Point to point season soon. That's if the government leaves us any horses to run. Yeah. Here, all off, is it? What? Well, between Alan and Lorna. Is it? Well, that's what I heard. I'm always the last to hear anything. You did right. Yeah, that's what I heard. Their business, isn't it? Not the whole village knows about it. Yeah, well, lad, up you jump. Get it on. Here. I wouldn't have said Alan was changeable. No. Of course, being over there could have changed him. And what do you think, Harry? Man's better off on his own. Over there and over here. Isn't that right, Harry? Yeah. Oh. Now, not another 
to see you now. We're going to go there anyway. Go on. Well, we'll see all about that. Ah, where? Yeah. Uncle of M shows. Get on. No, 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 not twice in one night. God forbid. <laughs> Ah, beau blanc. <coughs> Et ton ami, alors? Peut-être, non? Uh, now, there I fancy you are barking up the wrong tree. No? Absolutely not, merci. Dommage. Ah, merci. Thank you. Well, a little toast. To Simone and all who sail in a beau blanc. Do I shock you? No. Well, I'm fancy free, you know. Me too. I thought you were engaged. Well, at least unofficially. No, not anymore. Ah. I called it off. So it's uh, wine, women and song, is it? Stuck at the wine. Yeah, I haven't sung yet, actually. What did your sister say? Oh, God knows. Something brittle and dismissive, I dare say. Is it worth it? Well, it wasn't wildly expensive. No, I mean, present, fun, you know. In prospect? In the event? And why'd you do it? Don't be so dogged. Sorry. Would you believe a lament? Oh. I don't know. Our enterprise, Corporal Morgan, Tim Carey. Carey? My host in the trenches. Didn't know his name. He was killed, you know. I don't suppose he was sorry. I really felt he'd outlived this time. Not much fun on the ground, Wall. Not on the air anymore. No. I don't get any time Trick! Why not? You order it, what do you always want? My dear fellow. Don't call them M shows. Oh, spend it. <laughs> Why do you think? I don't know. I mean, I think it's any different, is it? Oh, really? Age? Perhaps? Us? Perhaps. Oh. Let's go on. Oh, I don't know. I was... Well, intimations of mortality. What? Well, you know, I mean, we always knew that people had to die, yes? Intellectually, that's the same. Yeah. Well, now it's... What do you know? I'm going to die. Yes. If not today, that makes tomorrow more likely, doesn't it? True. Also maudlin. Not to say downright morbid. Come on, let's have another drink. What'd you say? That was. Only hope, I'd say. I'm calling them shows. <laughs> Mademoiselle from Armentier, M to you. Who was a tidy skip with strength to stop it from doing the hard and free? Mademoiselle from Armentier. Come on, boy. Mademoiselle from Armentier. Rowdy lot. And me. And you. Rowdy. Sean? Found you, I'd say. Go on,
to disturb you, sir. The Colonel Major, Major Andrews. Is Who's flight commander? I am. Captain Triggers. Yes, <laughs> Sergeant. Sir. Take the Major's cap for him, would you, Sergeant? Certainly, sir. It's a bit late for the General Staff to be out and about, isn't it? The antipathy is mutual. Just so long as we know where we stand. <laughs> Question uh, of discipline. Go on. I'm Town Major. I was called to a disturbance at the Cafe Europe. Oh, sure. Many dead. Enough damage to impair yeah. relations with the locals. Caused by my men. My advice is that the whole fracas was provoked by two of them. And you have descriptions, of course. You have their names. Just descriptions. Out! <laughs> now see what you've done. Note the disparity in What's rank. That? They were off duty. Come and have a drink. <laughs> they were also drunk. Yes, well, so far as I... Whiskey, please. So far as I know, there's nothing in the manual of military law that says that an off-duty officer shouldn't, if he chooses, get drunk with an off-duty NCO. Or, for that matter, an enlisted man. Come on, have a drink. Conduct prejudicial. Oh, Major. They were in uniform. They were in a public place. They were, to put it mildly, flouting established norms. Supposing I were to tell you they've both been through a bad patch. Sentiment has always been inimical to discipline. Tell me, do they choose you for your pomposity or does it catch up on you? Come and sit down. Hey. Uh, yes. Can we have a ball back, please? <laughs> You've been practicing. Yes, keep it down, please. Things would come to a pretty pass if that kind of camaraderie were allowed to infect the BEF. That's arguable. Only in an irregular formation. So what are you going to do? Since they left before I arrived, the matter is outside my jurisdiction. Then what the hell are you doing here? Don't be willfully obtuse. So what are you going to do? In this instance, there's nothing that I can do. But make no mistake, we are aware of your eccentrics. Now get short shrift next time. Sergeant! Sir. Touch the Major's cap. Right away. Won't happen again. You would be advised to make sure that it doesn't. Goodbye, Major. Good night, Captain. Thank you, I still feel drunk. Nice, Dylan. Never mind. They do say that flying at 8,000 feet is the perfect cure. Alan. Perfect cure, eh? Caught one in the leg. Our favourite hun. Well, he won't be seeing the hum for a while. Can't fly an aeroplane with a busted leg. <laughs> 